Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to this beautiful day our Heavenly Father has made for us to come together as a congregation in praise, prayer, worship, song, and celebration. The announcements as are in the bulletin, are there announcements from the congregation at this time? Gary? Good morning. Okay, can everyone hear me? Okay, yeah, okay, good, thanks. All right, I have quite a few announcements to make, and I talked to several of you this morning, so if I forget something, someone told me, just like wave frantically. If you were here yesterday afternoon, like wave like I was on the side of the road. So, <laughs> um, anyway, thank you to everyone who um, came to the pancake breakfast yesterday especially everybody who helped. Um, and then a special thanks goes to Alex Browsey and the Geiger family for donating the real authentic maple syrup that we had. Um, we do have some food left from the pancake breakfast that we can slash can't return. Um, like we had orange juice, which we cannot return because that's a perishable item. Um, so I have three almost they're just shy of a three-quart size of Tropicana orange juice that is unopened. Um, they are good until October 21st. And we also have four standard size bottles of, as other people told me, fake syrup. Um, it's the original, like it's an original, it's not sugar-free, it's not the light, but it's just the original thing. Um, those are also unopened. Um, they are good until June or July of 2025 and technically we can return those but the last time we had some things to take back to a store I learned that even though they'll accept it they still have to scrap it so we don't want it like I just don't want to see it go to waste so if anyone would like to make a donation to the God Squad to purchase some of the I have any of those items for your home um, they are downstairs in the um, kitchen but please see John Flyter and he can help you with that. Um, also, on a God Squad note, please, if you're going to see Ruth, please have your money turned into him or Linda um, by Sunday the 28th. So that's two weeks from today. All right, and then also, I'm sure everyone knows, Pastor Scherner passed away this past week. Um, if you have not heard, Calling hours are Tuesday from 5 to 8 at Wise Funeral Home. Um, the service will be here at 11 a.m. on Saturday with a luncheon to follow. Um, the burial is, a, is private, um, and that's Monday, down closer to family in the Columbus area. Um, we are tentatively, as of this point, expecting maybe 100 people. So if people could please help stay today to set up tables and chairs in the basement, that would be greatly appreciated. Also, um, for September, we do not have anyone on the food committee. So I have created a sign-up sheet. I'm going to be down here um, at the end of the church service. So if anyone would like to make something, um, there is also things that need to be purchased that, you know, you don't need to make, like water or iced tea, um, and if, or if you would like to just donate some things, that would be greatly appreciated, and I will be down here, like I said, if you can see me, and we can get you signed up for that. Um, I think that's all, but I guess, too, if you want to be on the food committee, um, we also don't have anybody signed up for October or December, just to throw that out there. But um, thank you everyone for everything that you do here. And I think that's it. Am I good? Okay. Thank you, Gary. Also after service, there will be a brief meeting of God Squad downstairs in one of the Sunday school classes. Are there any other announcements? We extend our sympathy to Brian Evac on the fasting of his father, Louis Sladix. 
So keep them in their prayers. Are there any prayer requests at this time? Then let us pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, as we've come together today as a congregation, we are mindful of the many people we have lost through the years. Be with Pastor Scherner and his family as he's been received in your heavenly embrace. Be with Brian Evac as a, and the untimely death of his father, Lewis, and all those who have served in our country that they return safely home. At this time of year, we know the crops are suffering. We ask you to be with the farmers, help, help them have a bountiful crop so our harvest. We thank you for Michael Smith for leading our service here today. And we uplift him into your thoughts and your prayers that he inspire us through your word. In your son's precious name we pray. Amen. One other announcement, two other announcements. The hymn of the day is a two-sided sheet, so front and back on this hymn of the day. And Maddie Britt, where are you? Stand up. <laughs> Happy birthday, Maddie. Let us sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Maddie. Happy birthday to you. Let us do our hymn now, Victory in Jesus.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray in unison. The prayer of the day is printed in the bulletin. O Lord, help your people to avoid the infection of the evil one. And with pure hearts to follow you, our only Lord. Grant this, we pray, through Jesus Christ, the Son of our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Be seated. To thee, my 
blessed Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus, I surrender. Lord, I give myself to Thee. Fill me with Thy love and power. Let Thy blessings fall on me. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. Our first reading today comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 through 10. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting, but the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that all I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Behold, all of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? Let him who walks in darkness and has no light trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. We will now read responsively Psalm 116, verses 1 through 8. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. The Lord watches over the innocent. I was brought very low, and he helped me. For you have rescued my life from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. Our second reading comes from the book of James, chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness, for we all stumble in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. If we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder 
wherever they will of the pilots direct him. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. Here ends the readings. This is the Gospel according to Mark, the ninth chapter. When Jesus, Peter, James, and John came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them and scribes arguing with them. And immediately all the crowd, when they saw him, were greatly amazed and ran up to him and greeted him. And he asked them, What are you arguing about with them? And someone from the crowd answered Jesus, Teacher, I, bought my, I brought my son to you, for he has a, a spirit that makes him moot. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast it out, and they were not able. And he answered them, O oh, faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. And when the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy, and he fell to the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And it has often cast him into fire and into water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can, all things are possible for one who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, you moot and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out. And the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, this kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. Sermon. will be short and sweet, okay, yeah. sweetie? Why don't you sit here? How are you? Are you doing okay today? <clears throat> what are you with Sunday school today for the first time? What did you do in Sunday school? Were you with Grandma? Do we clue? 
Well, good morning, both of you. Thanks for coming. Well, today's children's sermon, sweetie, is going to be based on our second reading. Who gave you that? Who gave you that toy? Did Grandma give that to you or Mommy? Do you ever say thank you? Do you say thank you? Yeah. Well, our um, scripture in James talks about using our mouth for being kind and being thankful and using kind words. And sometimes we get angry or disappointed in people, but God says that we need to try to use our kind words. So what happens when someone gives you something, Lennon? Do you say thank you? Yes? Yeah? How, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. So in our um, verse, it also says that our mouth, we can use it to praise God, but we can also sometimes use some not nice words. And God says we all stumble sometimes, Lennon. We all make mistakes, and sometimes we say some mean things, but God says to ask for forgiveness and then just to try our best. Is grandma pretty nice to you, Lennon? Is she pretty nice? Yeah, does she say nice things to you? Yeah, so whenever you are talking to maybe your sister or your cousins, try to remember how grandma and mommy and daddy talk, how they talk really nicely to you. All righty, can you bow your head with me for a quick prayer? Dear Jesus, we ask for your guidance as we use our words to be kind and positive to others. Thank you, God, for loving us and forgiving us. Amen. Good morning. In Isaiah, the well-instructed tongue will teach us. The well-instructed tongue. How does a tongue teach us? Or do we teach a tongue and then it teaches us? That's a good question. I think it teaches us not only to say or what to say, but how to say it. It also teaches us how not to speak and when we shouldn't speak. Sometimes speak, not speaking, but just listening is more powerful than saying anything. <clears throat> Ask a grieving widow or a sibling or even a congregation. And ladies and gentlemen, I am sorry for your loss for your retired pastor. I truly am. I know what it's like. Or 
you can even ask someone who just found out they had cancer. I was with my brother when he was diagnosed with it. I didn't know what to say at that time. When he found out, all I could do was just be there with him. And I told him I was sorry. I told him, I says, I don't know what to say, but I'm sorry. He says, just being here with me is all I need. And sometimes that's, that's just enough. <clears throat> so remember, sometimes just being there listening is enough. Sometimes speaking the wrong words or saying the wrong word or just saying the wrong thing at the wrong time can be hurtful, even if it's not meant to be. And it's in that knowing is what makes the difference. When a baby is at the stage where he can reach, grab, laugh, and all that goof, goofy stuff, you know, that a baby normally does, we usually hold them up, play with them, let them grab your beards, for those of you men that have beards. Um, you know, we think it's funny, or if you wear glasses like me, they tend to grab your glasses and pull them off. You know, we think it's funny, we laugh, we just try to get the glasses without them breaking and stuff like that. Well, think of this. What if somebody you know, but you're not real close to, was to walk up to you and just grab your beard and start shaking it? Or grab your glasses and just pull them off your face? You're going to grab your glasses with one hand or take their hand off your beard with one hand and double your fist with the other and connect the fist with the face? Some will, some won't. Some will just take their finger and just point and give them the business. You know, that's things that people do. So why would it be different to do that to a, not do that to a baby but to a man? We're all human, correct? I think so. A baby doesn't know any better. But does the man? Mm, sometimes. My point here, ladies and gentlemen, like I said early, earlier, it's in that knowing. Like what Jesus said when he was being lashed. And when he was being hanged on the cross, for they know not, yes, they know not what they do. Please forgive them, Father. Jesus did not try to defend himself at either point in time when he was being punished. He merely stated that they didn't know. They actually def he actually defended the people that was punishing him. He asked and pleaded for their forgiveness. Imagine that. Somebody would grab your beard and you'd say, that's okay, I forgive you, instead of wanting to hit them. Today's society, I think it'd be a little hard to, to do, I think. So the next time a baby pulls your beard, think about this for a minute. Is the baby doing that? Or did maybe dad coerce the baby into doing it to get back at you for something? <laughs> no, I'm not saying that the baby would be smart enough to do that, but you never know. So, but I am saying before you speak, think first and decide if listening is the better choice or if you have enough in information to say what is needed to be said. This week it talks about those who teach, preach, and lead. They get scrutinized more the higher up the chain you go. For me as an example, I didn't move up any chain, but I am being graded. I'm being measured, scrutinized, or called out for, my, for any mistakes I might and probably will make. If I go to my local church and I fill the pulpit, I'm more comfortable. I can go off script and wander a bit and finish my sermon and most people won't even notice it if, if I make a mistake or not. 
Those that do make a mis- those that do notice that I made a mistake won't say anything because it's normal. People know you're going to make a mistake. They assume it's the way it's supposed to be. I can't get away with that here yet. I'm not here every week, so people don't know what normal is with me. I have to set myself to a higher standard or to fill the pulpit and at the same time keep myself humble to the reality that we all make mistakes and I'm no exception. Now there's a few of you here that do know me and most of you that do know me from dartball and I've already been approached by that um, earlier by not being as loud and cheerful as we are at, in dartball so I'm trying to keep it a little low key. I am not here simply because I know. I am here because I was taught by the people who do know and guided me in a direction to be able to help when necessary. The cycle continues on and on. If you think about it, we're all being taught. Every Sunday service, Bible study, any classes we take, or retreats that any of us might attend, we are all learning. From there, it's up to us to feel the presence of the Spirit moving within us, to find our calling and act upon it, whether it be filling the pulpit, assisting, being accompanist, being a youth leader, working with the meal ministry, or somewhere else. We're always being called for something. It's up to us to determine what that calling is. When God talks to you, and if you don't hear him, he will call out again. It might not be the next minute, might not be that same day, but eventually he will call back out. Always have an attentive ear for God, so when he does call you, you don't miss it. Some people hear him and run and hide because of the fear they have of what is to come. I was one of those people. I ran. I ran so far I lost myself. I was in a deep, deep, dark hole. I was lost for a long time until God came to me personally. He came to me in the form of a pastor. And it's Pastor Matt Wheeler. Some of you might know him. Some of you might probably don't. I don't know. Those of you that did know him, he was a good man. Those that don't, well, I'm sorry you didn't get a chance to because, like I said, he, he was a, for me, he was a truly good man. Pastor Matt came knocking at my door one day. I was at a low point in my life. He knocked at the door, I opened it, and I said, can I help you? He said, hi, I'm Pastor Matt. I'm from First Lutheran Church about a block up the road from you. And I thought to myself in my head, oh crap, here we go. Another Bible thumper wanting to try to get me to go to his church and take my money from me. Well, I said, okay, what do you got to offer? And I thought, I'll listen, see what he says. He said to me, he goes, what problems do you have in your community? What would you like to see for the children of your community to do better? I thought, pastors don't talk like that. They want to tell you what's in the book. They want to try to get your money. This is weird. He goes, do you have any kids? I say, yes, but they're grown up. You got grandkids. Well, my kids are starting to, to raise families. Well, how can we make it fun for them? Okay. Come on in, have a glass of iced tea or a glass of ice water, and let's, let me listen to what you have to say. Well, people, that's how I now know that the Lord will speak to you in all kinds of ways, because look at me now. 12, 13 years later, I'm standing up here, help fill in the pulpit for people that's more educated than I am, trying to do the best I can for the good Lord himself. So 
the Lord will speak to you in all kinds of ways. It's just a matter of how you listen to him. Peter, James, and John, they experienced the glory of God speaking firsthand up on that mountain. Jesus had taken them with him up on the mountain to reveal his glory and helped ensure their faith as they endured the difficulties of ministry after Jesus' death, his resurrection, and also his ascension. As they were coming down the mountain, they discovered a strong compassion of a young man's father. The father came to Jesus, asking him to heal the man's son. The father had, tr had tried everything possible, but could not heal him. Jesus declared, healing is possible, but it requires faith and prayer. The father replied that he wanted to believe, but he needed help with his unbelief. We often do much the same thing. We know Jesus is more able to meet our needs, but we still question whether we will answer our prayer, or if he will answer our prayers. In verse 19, how long shall I stay with you? Jesus was asking the disciples, the one he must trust to do his good works, the ones he needs to trust once he is gone, were lacking the faith to cast away Satan and gain victory for that boy. Here's a little twist in this statement. Jesus wasn't talking about his disciples being unfaithful. Jesus was speaking about, and here we go, he was talking about himself. The faith in himself to provide strength in them. Jesus felt that he lacked the faith from his disciples to have the confidence to have strength and power to face Satan and lack the faith to overcome him. Sometimes we all fall short of the confidence needed in our faith. But be assured, Satan is lurking and waiting. He doesn't mind us going to church, attend services, singing songs, doing meals, praying prayers, or any of those things. As long as we're going through the motions, he doesn't mind. But as soon as we get serious about serving our Lord and we decide to move forward and strengthen our faith in Jesus and draw close to him, when we start feeling his power, we are likely in for a battle. Satan is in the business of defeating the church, so we need to be aware and prepared. At the end of the day, Jesus once again defeated Satan and cast him out for good. Just like then, today, we are healed from sin. We set free from the bondage of sin. We're restored to God through Jesus. We all face difficulties in life. Oftentimes, these difficulties are beyond our, abil our abilities to handle. Faith in Jesus is essential to overcome and experience victory. As we leave here today, ask yourself this question. Does it seem as your faith is weak? We need to trust that Jesus will pro provide even when it seems hopeless. Have faith and trust in him. Look to each other and ask for guidance and support if and when it's needed. And with that I say, thanks be to God.
Let us please rise for the Apostles' Creed on page 65. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He grew him again, Christ, and in the Holy Spirit, Lord of God's church, Jesus' thanks, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of heart, and life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, you have sent us into the world to be your witnesses. Thank you for making us ambassadors of Christ. In the short time that we have in this world, help us not to miss the opportunities you have given us to speak and testify that are living and reflect your grace, love, and mercy so that when our earthly lives are ended, your word will continue throughout all generations to proclaim the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, we seek your presence, gracious Lord, in the waning days of summer as daylight grows shorter and evening settles in. Remind us of your never failing light and guide us to reflect the light of your love in all our days. Lord, in your mercy, Bring the presence of your peace into places where violence is an everyday reality, our homes, our neighborhoods, our cities, and across your world. Bless and sustain all those who work for peace and advocate for an end to a violence. Lord, in your mercy. We pray this day for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Be present with the unemployed, underemployed, and those who live without hope, and those who are despairing. We uplift you and name in our hearts all those of us who are blessed with your healing presence. Lord, 
Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, the Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And I is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord.